uh, and now have committed to become dedicated professionals. We are indeed grateful that you were traveling and you were able to spare time to come to this occasion. We look forward to hearing your words of wisdom. Our batch today is represented by about 68-69% women. I am Rota continues to make history. Last year we had 70% women and prior to that we had 50% women. Out of 7,000 plus students who interviewed, 262 were finally chosen. Out of uh, the, the 7,000 we shortlisted and interviewed. The overall number of students who expressed interest in our Rotak was more than 250,000. This is very, very competitive process. People have been uh, working hard for a year or so to come and be successful. We present the badge to you, sir. Thank you. And we look forward to hearing from you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I would now like to invite our honorable chief guest, Sri Manoj Sinhaji, to kindly deliver his address. Sir, please. We welcome our honorable chief guest, Sri Manoj Sinha, honorable Lebanon Governor, Jammu and Kashmir, Professor Dhiraj Sharma, Director I am Rota, esteemed faculty members and students. Today, we have gathered here to celebrate the grand occasion of induction and orientation program of 12th batch of PGP and the 9th batch of doctoral program in management at Ayam Rotha. It is an honor and a privilege to welcome you to the Ayam Rotha community. You are the cream of the... Now let me share some of my experiences as the Lieutenant Governor of Jammu and Kashmir, which are more localized and hence more intimate and personal. The biggest challenge one faces in Jammu and Kashmir is, can we learn from history but leave the past behind and embarrass the future, a future that is built on the promise and potential of the youth of Jammu and Kashmir, youngsters who are just like you with creative minds and looking for outlets to innovate and contribute to the society. Since I took over in the last August over the leadership, we have made many changes, actively working day and night with a solutions approach. We have introduced over 150 new initiatives and reforms in a short period of time. What we have been doing in Jammu and Kashmir follows the strategic planning principles of management with one, goal setting, two, situational analysis, three, strategy formulation, fourth, strategy implementation, and fifth, evaluation and control, all being critical part of the process. I am sure you will learn both theoretical and practical applications of such management strategies during your course. Let me share three examples of solution-based approaches that we came up with dealing with the pandemic, the COVID management and the vaccination drive. The UT administration's prompt response to the second wave of COVID-19 can be attributed to its experience and investment made in health sector and emergency preparedness immediately after the first wave impacts subsided in August and September. Several strategic interventions were planned and implemented by the UT government in September 2020. For example, augmentation of oxygen generation plants and capacity building. From 14,000 LPM oxygen generation capacity in September last year, we reached 60,000 LPM within six months. When the entire country was gasping for oxygen, there was not a single case in Jammu and Kashmir where people looking for oxygen bed faced any hurdle. I personally worked with the diverse departments for future mitigation strategies to ensure citizens of Jammu and Kashmir had access to better health services to the greatest extent possible. I also took a decision to decentralize the community health care by setting up a five-bedded COVID care center in every panchayat of the union territory as many households may not have the option for isolation of COVID positive patients in their own residence. Each panchayat COVID center has one oxygen supported bed for immediate patient care. Jammu and Kashmir began COVID-19 vaccination planning in advance as per guidelines issued by the Government of India. 
for equitable access we have involved diverse collaborators partner with influencers and religious leaders for community education and confidence building in order to prioritize the allocation the ut humanization department prepared a data enabled solution for the targeted group i gave a mantra of a stronger and healthier jnk with 10 point strategy farming jnk model and ensured dedicated workforce and expanded outreach this strategic intervention enabled us to successfully vaccinate more than 88% population in the priority groups with the first dose some of the districts have become the role model for the entire country for example sopian gandarbal jammu rajouri baramula badipura badgaon and sama have clocked 100% vaccination coverage of first dose for priority groups Weyan in Bandipura became the first village in the country that was fully vaccinated between the age group of 18 to 44 technology is a great enabler but there are certain pockets where people do not have access to internet for example nomad community that is gujar and bakarwal are old age people disabled population in my opinion vaccination is a public service and our motto in jnk is to deliver the public service at people's doorstep so we decided then instead of people making efforts to reach out to the hospitals we must reach out to them with vaccine we made sure that lack of digital literacy or technological impediment should not hit our vaccination drive the second problem that I, that i wanted to solve for was a mechanism for the general public to engage with policy makers we built a platform for information sharing and grievance redressal i went and asked citizens they wanted to be heard they wanted their everyday problems to be solved and i we decided from 10:30 in the morning to 11:30 we initiated a three tier system dividing the constituents into three blocks where the senior most officials to the mid and junior level officers have to meet the public on a rotational basis cutting through the red tape from high level problem solving to the smallest of issues my aim has to help and enable the citizens of jammu and kashmir to assess governance and its institutions every wednesday i follow this up with a mega block divas from 10 to 4 pm where all the officers are available together to resolve issues i initiated a 21 day long jan abhiyan focus has been to complete construction build roads highway enhanced connectivity to enable job creation and employment to revive the spur local industry and economy we are the highest ranked state now on completing all such projects over 55 schemes have been launched and these include several social benefit schemes both at the central and the state level to truly actualize the pm's vision of an inclusive and empowered nation to inculcate a sense of pride and to take development all the way to the village well i have launched the jk gram initiative i hold the lg mulaqat once every month to directly connect with people and resolve their grievances the financial incentive is done at the panchayat level where we have now impacted over 20000 young boys and girls from every panchayat providing them with financial assistance and hand holding to become entrepreneur and tell me and let me tell you 25% are girl i initiated back to village and my town and my town my pride programs both the initiatives are focused on creating enabling environments across governance services and delivery to empower and celebrate the uniqueness which is enshrined in the very fabric of jammu and kashmir respect local cultures and traditions and genuinely care for the people engage in form and <coughs> empathize friends increase the budgetary allocation to over 1 lakh crores increasing the budgetary allocation to over 1 lakh crores 
we are looking at a massive budget of almost over five times per citizen given to the size of the population. I truly see this as a historic approach focusing on the Human Development Index and an investment in the future of Jammu and Kashmir, bringing peace and opportunity in the valley too. There are far-flung areas, but in three years, road, electricity and water will not be the issues that our citizens will need to worry about. And what is our promise of a brighter and a better future with learning, education and growth? We have more government officials in the state than the average ratio of the rest of the country. The institution of democracy, building block of our country, this deserves a mention because a strengthening democratic institution is my topmost priority. I am a product of the students' movement, and today, as a constitutional authority, I am proud to share with you that we held District Development Council elections, which were violence-free, transparent, free, and fair. Implementation of 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment in Jammu and Kashmir was pending for a long time. Now I'm happy to see that the elected representatives run the DDC and working for the development of the respective areas. The newly elected representatives are empowered, come from the ground up, and they are truly committed for growth and development. First time district capex budget of 12,600 crore was planned through wider consultation with all three tier of PRIs, this is happened in this union territory first time. Jammu Kashmir is close to my heart because every step for development can affect real change to millions of people. We are not talking about building roads and institutions only. We are looking at transforming lives for the better. In the coming years, we are planning to generate 3,500 megawatt electricity in four years bring reforms through land laws, organizing more structured apple farming through high-density plantation, bring industry reforms through the new industrial policy, attracting more than 30,000 crores investment and creating more than 5 lakh jobs within two years.